she isn't the jealous type, right? Well, under normal circumstances, not really, but... Well, I don't know what Monica has done to her. So, I don't know. We all take our seats at the front of the room, with Monica standing right in front of us. Okay, everyone, here's the news. Starting next week, the student newspaper and photography club are going to are going to be going around and doing a profile on all of the different clubs. It's part of their biannual Meet the Clubs piece that they do every semester. As of now, they're scheduled to meet with us and do... Uh, as of now, they're scheduled to meet with us to do their piece next Monday, so I was hoping that we could think of something that'll really show off the club. Natsuki audibly groans. This isn't going to be like the festival again. Oh, is this going to be like the festival again? Monica seems a little taken aback by this, but she tries to shrug it off. No, not really. We won't have to be performing for anyone this time, and I certainly don't think we'll need to put in the same level of preparations for this compared to the festival. But I would appreciate it if we could at least come up with something nice that'll show off the club. Everyone takes a moment to collect their thoughts. <laughs> Sayori is completely zen. It's like, hmm, uh, almost got it, almost got it. <laughs> also, this, this is the perfect lineup from small to, lo to, to longest. <laughs> or tallest. Smallest to tallest. Be, please be in this configuration always, because for the face cam it also works out. <laughs> After a moment of silence, Natsuki is the first to speak up. I wouldn't mind baking cupcakes again, and still have plenty of ingredients left over. I did happen to keep the welcome banner that Mark and I made for the festival. I just need to find it. It's somewhere at my house, and I wouldn't mind some help looking for it. Yuri looks whimsically at me. It doesn't seem like she wants to let. Uh, it doesn't like. It doesn't seem like she wants to let what happened between me and Sayori go. Yeah, I wouldn't mind helping you again. I'd love to come over to your place anytime. But you came to my place. For, <laughs> you came to my place last. Preparing for the festival with you was really fun. Yuri looks off, attempting to compose herself. Yeah, it was really nice. She says that softly to herself, but quickly realizes that everyone overheard. Oh, I mean, yeah, I would love your help. I chuckled to myself. Yuri's mannerisms have always been adorable. So Yuri, once again, sure. I still have it. Yeah, why the hell didn't you tell? Why the hell didn't you talk about that? So Yuri, once again, shoots me some quizzical. The same quizzical glance she gave me yesterday when Yuri brought up the time we spent together last Sunday. Sooner or later, I'm going to have to resolve this, all this, and tell Yuri that I'm with Sayori. As well as tell Sayori everything that happened between us on Sunday. Hopefully that will put her mind to rest. Thankfully, Monica comes in to seemingly save the situation. I can type up a summary of what we do on a day-to-day -day basis, and write, and write some things down for what we could tell the newspaper. Oh, oh, I know what I can do! Everyone turns to Sayori. I can go to the library and get some books for us to read. I think it I think it'd look good for when they take pictures of us. Great call, Sayori. As for you, Mark, do you have any ideas? Hmm. I take a moment to think I take a few moments to think to myself. Maybe I could write some poetry. I mean I'm not I'm not the best at it, but that's kind of like one of the best activities that we do in the club, so. You know, maybe I could like write a couple of examples or maybe gather examples and like make a sort of like collage of all the poems or something. Something like that, maybe. Suddenly I get an idea. Did I or did I not fucking call that? <laughs> I could I could join a real life literature club. I would be I, I would fit in there. So well these nowadays. <laughs> I've got I've got excellent excellent experience from a psychopathic yandere in the in the club that murdered all the other club members. So whatever real life literature club I join is gonna be a cakewalk. <laughs> well, I can bring in some famous poems that we could also use for the photo pops. I think it'd be great to show that there is more to literature than, than just books. Oh, I literally just fucking called that! Heck, maybe I can even use some of our own poems as well. 
I can only organize it together like Monica did. Holy shit. I could have written this. I could have fucking written this game. Well, it wasn't that wasn't that hard to think of, but still. I'm pretty I'm pretty pretty fucking stoked about the fact that I literally just fucking called this out <laughs> before it happens. Everyone pauses to reflect on what I just said. That's a good idea, Mark. I'll hand you all my stuff tomorrow if that's okay with you. That's perfectly fine. I have all my poems back at my place. I can give them to you later. Yeah, Mark, I'll give you mine tomorrow. I believe I have my poems with me. Let me check quickly. Your research is, for, your research is through her bag and retrieves a small stack of papers. Here you go, Mark. That should be everything. Oh, Yuri hands me your poems. Thanks, Yuri. Okay, everyone. You all know what to do. That concludes today's meeting. Be sure to find your poems and give them to Mark. Everyone begins packing their things, mostly talking about their level of excitement for the upcoming events. As I think to myself, this would probably be the first time I've ever been interviewed by our school's newspaper for anything. I know Monica's been interviewed before, and somehow Sayori has been interviewed before as well. But I guess for Natsuki, Yuri and I, this will be our first time. It's not. It wouldn't be my first time in real life. I've, I, well, it was in vain. But I have been interviewed by, uh, fucking by national TV once. But it di didn't matter because none of that stuff actually was broadcast. <laughs> I had to fucking talk to those guys for like half an hour, and event and nothing of that came in. Like nothing was used in the the fucking news broadcast. <laughs> but it was on. Uh, Oh, no, no, it wasn't on national TV. Oh, yeah, well, it was. It was. But it was also on... Uh, but it was it was recorded by provincial TV. But it was also broadcast on national TV. But I had to fucking talk to those guys for like half an hour. And then nothing of that came in the actual broadcast. Nothing of that, like, appeared in the actual broadcast. <laughs> you could see me on TV. But, you know, I didn't... You didn't... I didn't say anything. I did. But they just... They, they cut all that stuff out. <laughs> I feel my anxiety start to rise as I think about it. My train of thought ends as I feel a tap on my shoulder. Ready to walk home, Mark? Yep, let's go. After I finish packing my things, so Yuri and I wave goodbye to the others as we head out to start our walk home. During the walk home, I feel so Yuri gently take my hands. When I turned to her, she kept looking straight ahead, madly blushing. <laughs> I smile to myself as we keep walking. It seems that we've got more comfortable with showing off our affection for each other in public, even if it's something as simple as holding hands. Sayori seems to be in a really good mood today. Well, she did say she she did say me being around helps her feel better. God, that I have no problem spending time around Sayori. But if this was the cue to her problems all along, just us spending time to spending time around each other. At this rate, she should get rid of those rain she should be rid of those rain clouds in no time. <laughs> well. Don't take it that lightly. Depression isn't that. Uh, depression is a worthy adversary, as as annoying as it may seem. It'll find its way to wiggle its way back into the fight. So don't take it that lightly. The thought of the thought of that keeps me smiling through the duration of our walk. Eventually, we reach our we reach our houses. Hey, Mark. Yeah, Sayori. I think I know where my poems are. I can stop by your house in a bit and drop them off if that's okay. Sayori's voice trails off. I see where she's going with this. Yeah, I'd love to have you over. I'll see you in a bit, Sayori. Okay. Sayori and I briefly embrace each other as, as we head back to our respective houses. I hope she can I hope she can stay a little longer in this. She, blah, 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 blah. I hope she can stay a little longer this time. I drop my book back in the middle of my room and change out of my uniform. I begin looking through my messy stack of papers on my desk in an attempt to find the poems I wrote. I just hope I didn't accidentally throw them away. Come on, they gotta be here somewhere. Aha! There they are! I pull my poems out of my stack and start organizing them a little. Reading through them, I see how far I've progressed as a writer. My more recent poems certainly seem more, seem more developed and structured compared to the first poem I wrote. I'm also reminded of in the inspiration behind all these poems, my dear Sayori. Just thinking about her allowed me to power through the, this arduous task. I guess I did end up writing for her after all. 
I did end up writing it for her after all. I put down my poems and go to my back to go to my back to retrieve Yuri's poems, which I put right next to mine. I noticed that in Yuri's stack of poems there's a purple piece of paper. Hmm. I don't remember Yuri ever writing her poems down on purple paper. Maybe she accidentally gave me something. Before I could investigate further, I hear my doorbell ring. Wow, Sayori was a lot quicker than I thought she'd be. I go downstairs to let Sayori in. This is Sayori's house, but okay. I open the door to see Sayori standing outside with her poems. Hey Mark, I found them. She proudly hands them to me. That's awesome, thank you Sayori, you're the best. Sayori blushes at my compliments. So, wanna come in? Yeah, I'd love to. Awesome. I let Sayori into my house. Yeah, this is Sayori's living room in blue sky, so it's like, uh. <laughs> I put Sayori's poems on the dining room table and join her in the living room. So, what exactly do you want to do? I... I've definitely got more than a few ideas in mind. Oh? And what would they be? She looks at me quizzically, and an, obvi an obvious sense of intrigue in her eyes. Well, let me show you. We slowly shuffle closer to each other until we're close enough to feel each other's breath. Her breath is shallow. Her eyes are locked in with my, her eyes are locked with mine. My vision feels hazy. Her eyes—they have always been that. Be have they always been that beautiful blue color? That scent of cinnamon mixed with the feeling of her soft breath grazing, grazing my neck. Suddenly, I remember what I wanted to do. Remember when we had that big debate over who could get more? Gold trophies in Mario Kart when we were little? So here he pauses to remember. Yeah? Why? I think it's time to settle that debate again. So you ever giggles at my suggestion. Alright, Mark, I'll warn you though, I won't hold back. <laughs> she managed to say that in a both in a both playful and ominous tone. Growing up, Sayori and I had a bit of an annual competition to see who get the most gold trophies in Mario Kart. Every so often we would trade the winning title. But I remember that I barely beat her out last time. We also had a tradition where the loser would get would have to pay the winner's ice cream at at Go, Gomaya's. Usually when Sayori would win, she'd get the most ridiculously expensive sundae. Almost as almost as a way to rub it in that, he, that she won. Usually I'd be humble and get something cheap. I power on my Wii and hand her one of the controllers. Mario Kart Wii even. I thought we were going to be really like I thought we were gonna be Mario playing Mario Kart DS, but I guess a Wii was makes a lot more sense when there's like multiple people and she doesn't have a Nintendo on her. Seeing Mario Kart boop up on the screen again triggers a flood of memories from my childhood. It's been years since I played this game, and even longer since Sayori and I have played it together. My skills are probably a little rusty, but I hope hers are as well. What map should we play first? Rainbow Road! Just, we gotta rip that bandaid off right now! So here he shoots me a sly look. Yes! 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 High five, Sayori! How about Rainbow Road? You really think we should start off on that map, considering how long it's been? Only reason I even remember it was because of our frustrating it. That is exactly why you should that that my guy is exactly why you should start with Rainbow Road. And so you already understands that. It could still be fun, unless you're too chicken. All right, you're on. As we sit there choosing our races, I decide to go with my old man Luigi. Ah, no, Wario or Waluigi all the way. Waluigi. <laughs> As I expected, Sayori chooses Daisy, her all-time favorite. <laughs> it's actually Mario Kart on the screen. What? <laughs> well, here we go! That, that, that already just, uh, is this that one corner that I that I hate? It is, isn't it? Oh no, no, it's not. I think I don't know. It, I believe that it's there. It's after you go through those two uh, two circles. There's like a corner which is like a zigzag. You go right, it, go, it goes right and down. Then it goes left and then it goes up right again like in a curve. And it is extremely easy to fall off there because you're busy swerving around because you're going through those two circles. And then there's like a the fucking there's like a zigzag and then like an oval, like a half oval to, to the right. And it's super easy to fall off there. I and then because if you go up you bounce off the railing into the void. 
And then also when you go up the other way around. But uh, when you go the other way around, there isn't even a railing. So it's, 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 I hate it, but that's not here. I don't think it is, at least. Good luck, Mark. The race is off. The first thing I do is fall right off the map with Sayori quickly following. Now you see why I always hate this map. Yeah, but it's still pretty fun. A small man just to come across, to form across my face. So you're always able to find the joy in almost anything. Well, early on, so Yuri and I trade leads for first place. After all, I'm able to stay in first fairly comfortably. Of course, that means I'm. That means I've been bombarded with red shells, <laughs> blue shells. That's what you should worry about. Why do you have so many red shells? The farther you are from first place, the better your better items you get. Oh yeah, I need to play this more. So here he lets out a giggle as she throws out another red shell that nearly hits me. Nice try. However, as soon as I say that, Sayuri, Sayuri is able to pass me. Thank you! Sayuri and I continue to trade leads with most of the fir first two laps. Neither of, us able to, neither of us able to gain much distance on each other before the other, before the other takes the lead again. Finally, it comes down to the last stretch of the race. I'm barely in first. I can almost see the finish line. Seemingly out of nowhere, one of the NPC players starts to catch up to us. In the blink of an eye, the NPC passes Sayori and is right on my tail. Now, I don't need two things to worry about. Well, time to use the shells I've been saving for the ends. I start throwing out my shells randomly in effort to get the NPC and Sayori off my tail. The first show hits the NPC successfully. Its card quickly spirals out of control before promptly fail falling off the map. However, Sayori is able to dodge the other shells I threw. I look to see what that I still have one left. How? You can only get three shells at max unless this guy has a three shell. Like he deployed the three shell that swerved around and then he kept like one extra shell in his inventory. Which is luck because you know you can only use... well, whatever. I guess that that must be a strategy, because it's impossible otherwise. Because if he only had a three shell, one hit the NPC, so then he only has two left, so he cannot have another one remaining. So, he must have deployed, has, he must have had the three shells deployed around him, and then one shell in his infantry. The green shells. With the finish line only about ten seconds away, and with Sayori and I neck and neck, it's now or never that I use my last shell. Take this! In, a, in desperation, I throw my last show out randomly. However, I come to regret that decision rather quickly. Oh crap, no! I somehow end up hitting myself with the show I just threw. Before I know it, Sayori passes me and wins the race. Yay, I won! I sit there <laughs> absolutely stunned. I just cost myself the game. Looks like you have to buy my favorite Sunday. Sunday, I don't know how you pronounce it, again. Oh no, not if I have anything to say about it. I playfully tackle her to the floor. She giggles as she tries to get up, but fortunately I'm too strong for her. What the hell? <laughs> this looks nothing like the other one. <laughs> hey, no fair, Meanie, you promised. Sayori playfully points... Sayori playfully pouts while giving me puppy eyes. Under most circumstances, they really would have worked. On, they really wouldn't work on me, but for some reason today they're super. It's super effective. It's because your Wii is on. <laughs> Even though, yeah, uh, yeah, Pokemon is also from uh, Nintendo, right? Don't, yeah, I believe. I believe so. It's, it's Japanese, so that's close enough. Under most circumstances, oh yeah, I just read that. I know. I know. I'm gonna buy you whatever you want. I'm just me I'm just messing with you, Sayori. Sayori shoots me a look of relief. So when do I get my ice cream? As soon as you can get up. Sayori manages to put up a put up a good effort to get up, but again, I'm too strong for her. <laughs> you haven't changed a bit, have you, Sayori? Neither have you, Mark. What do you mean? You've always been that brash, funny guy next door, who always has his head in the clouds. You've always been so kind to me, even when I don't even when I don't think I deserve it. You've always looked out for me. I can hear Sayori's voice starting to break. You always help me when I'm feeling down, even if you don't realize that. Trying my best not to blush, eventually I break a crack I break and crack a wide grin on a grin at her. You're the reason I even get up out of bed in the morning, Mark. 
You're the reason I can feel happiness and joy in my life. You're the reason I'm even alive. Even when I'm at my lowest point, when my rain clouds just pour on me. You're the sunshine that you're the sunshine I need to break them away. I see now that I'm the luckiest girl in the world to have you as my boyfriend. I see tears starting to swell up in Sayori's eyes. Listening to Sayori that really hits Listening to Sayori say that really hits me hard inside. I'm the reason she's alive. There's no way she would, you know, she would never. Before I can finish my train of thought, Sayori inches her face closer to mine. Mark, I. <laughs> Sayori's lips suddenly meet mine. Despite the sudden shock, I managed to return her kiss, our lips interlocking. The taste of... <laughs> that's appropriate, since Peachy Pie is the name of the, the new song from uh, Doki Doki Plus. The taste of peach fills my mouth as our lips push back against each other. The small, the small cinnamon radiating from her, from her hair seems to put me in, tra in a trance. I pull back and lock eyes with Sayori as she lays there with, with baited... Baited? Breath. There's a minute of silence between us as we get lost in each other's eyes. Finally, I decide to break the silence. So, I guess you won. <laughs> yeah, I won the fair and square. I get I get off of Sayori and help her up. Well, I think that's enough video games for one day. You only played Rainbow Road! <laughs> I thought, when you said trying to get most gold medals, I thought we were going to do like, like a whole bunch of races or like an entire tournament. But no, we just played Rainbow Road once and that was it. Okay. I thought... Yeah, well, if I knew there was only going to be... Oh, well, I still would have picked Rainbow Road, actually. <laughs> I was about to say, if I knew it was only Rainbow Road, I would have picked another map, but that's not true. I would have picked Rainbow Road anyway. Want to see what's on TV? Yeah, sure. I spent the next few hours watching some old movies and cuddling. Eventually the sun sets and it starts to get dark out. Well, I better head back and start getting start getting ready for tomorrow. Yeah, but me that the day went by so fast. Yeah, but I'll see you tomorrow, Mark. I had so much fun with you today. I did too, Sayori. I'll see you tomorrow. Sayori gives me one more hug before leaving before leaving to go back to her house. As she shuts the door, I collapse back onto my couch, exhausted by today's events. We finally kissed. I can't still can't believe it. I should have seen it coming. But I'm surprised with just how well my relationship with Sayori is coming along. Even if I have no idea what I'm doing. Or maybe this is... Or maybe, th maybe this was... So... Or maybe this was what Sayori needed all along. I guess that's what you mean. Because uh, this, the, this, <laughs> this looks weird. She just wanted to be around me again. Am I really the answer to all her problems? Then again, I don't really know how just how deep her problems run. And if she says having rain clouds when I'm not around her, well, she should be able to talk about her problems with someone else, not just me. I'm not even entirely sure if I'm the only one who knows about her problems as well. Her parents know about this, right? Then again, Sayori's dad really isn't around much because of his because of his work. And her mom moved back to the countryside following that divorce. Unless Monica knows, I might be the only one she's told. I can try being around her as much as I can, but I can't be there for her 24-7. Especially if my plans for the summer still end up happening. What plans for the summer? I guess I have to figure something out then. Still, it was nice to spend just it was nice to spend more time around her today. Hopefully she'll be fine for the rest of the night. I flip back on I flip back on the TV and watch a few more shows before grabbing Sayori's poems off the dining room table and handing up to my room. Check out that purple piece of paper from Yuri. Don't you dare don't you dare to go to sleep before you check it out. After grabbing Sayori's poems from the dining table, I put her stack right next to mine and Yuri's. I remember that yes, there we go. I remember there was something in Yuri's stack that stood out to me. After comparing all three stacks, I see Sayori's stack is completely identical to mine. Yuri's stack is the one that has a purple piece of but there has a purple piece of paper. The only one with purple piece of paper. I begin I begin to look through Yuri's stack. As I look through her poems, I can't help but be reminded of the first time we shared. 
At first it was a bit hard to understand the meaning of her poems, but the more I read, the more I understood them. Yuri was always probably one of the club's deepest writers. Her poems may look convoluted and confusing on the surface, but once you, but once you got past that, you got to realize that Yuri's poems were always meaningful and, ar and articulate. I always found joy in reading her poems. They can always bring... They can always bring as fun... They can always be as fun to read as Natsuki's, and just as deep as Sayuri's and Monica's. He truly is a talented writer. Heck, she might even be one of the best writers I've ever met. I really have learned a lot from her. Through my train of thoughts, thought, the pe one piece of one of the pieces of paper es uh, escapes my grip. I put the poems on my desk and bend down to grab the stray paper. I look at the title. I don't remember reading this one. Oh, this! Oh, this is one in purple. Purple calligraphy. Oh, yeah, that, that's like the art of writing, I believe. A blank, or like, I well, I believe it's mostly like a, a Eastern or a e uh, yeah, Eastern, like Asian, uh, maybe maybe specifically Japanese thing. But like that's uh, like when you have like I believe I believe it is like a huge like parchment paper that you have to like really like you have to put like like weights on it to keep it like nice and tight and then you have need to grab like a sort of like a pen um, I don't know what it's called uh, like a it's like a paintbrush and you need to like uh, and then you write the characters on it very delicately and then the, yeah he, he, like usually they wear like one of those um, but uh, what are they called kimonos or whatever. I don't know what they're called, but they're very long sleeves, and then you need to use your other hands to keep the sleeve away so that they don't actually like drip in the oil or in the ink. I mean, a blank banner spread out and ready to become a work of art. The calligraph, the calligrapher, calligrapher prepare, prepares her pen. Inspiration is rushing to create. Every mark she makes, every stroke of her hands, precise, calculated, and yet still expensive. Hey, she's finally using the parchment paper that I bought for her in Blue Skies. <laughs> I bought that as a present for her in Blue Skies, but the game never brought it up again. I bought it, I never gave it to her, Yuri never said, I never gave it to her, like, off, off camera or whatever, Yuri never commented on it. I just spent a crap ton of money on it, and then it never was brought up again. So now she's finally using it. She, it took me two months, but we're, we're here. <laughs> From deep within, she finds her innermost feelings, making them known across the banner before her. All the while, she thinks only of him, with whom she with whom she filled another banner. Oh, oh shit! Is this like literally like a love confession in poem form? The story she lays will last only as long as the material which bears it. The canvas, as her life, is frail and temp and temporal. The ink, as her feelings, may fade under the poor treatment. Under poor treatments, yet she continues undeterred, carried by her wish to make her feelings known, laying them bare to the world the only way she knows how. Finally, the banner is complete, the story told, her love expressed. As fear and courage fight for her state of mind, she delivers her work to him, with whom she filled with whom she filled another banner. Yeah, with every ounce of courage, she hands it to him. A confession of everything she cannot say. She breathlessly awaits his reply, but finds contentment in knowing there are more stars that there. There the, 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 the. she finds contentment knowing there are more stories ahead, for the two of them to create together. With all of my love, Yuri. Oh, oh my God! Wow. That is ridiculously beautiful. But of course, I cannot fucking betray Sayuri. But. Holy shit. Oh shit. She likes me. <laughs> and on that, and on that bombshell, it's time to end. Thank you very much for watching. Good night. <laughs>